Hey, and welcome back, YouTubers. Today, we're going to experiment with a QCW type Tesla coil and go into some of the uh, construction details and electronics. So let's begin. This amazing concept of a QCW Tesla coil was originally proposed by Steve Ward, and here's one of his early videos. The idea for these ramped type solid state Tesla coils was born from the observations with tube Tesla cores, also known as VTTC Tesla cores, driven from the mains ramp, which produced quiet, sword-like output. Here's a picture taken from Low Notion's website. These type of cores can develop immensely long sword arcs with a 10 to 1 ratio or greater compared with the height of the secondary. And that's one of the things that's interesting about these coils. The actual secondary voltage is not that high, but the sparks grow because of uh, propagation along the length of the spark as the ramp progresses. So this is like a schematic of how a QCW, or quasi-resonant continuous wave Tesla coil works. So typically, these coils need some sort of um, microprocessor. And the most commonly used microprocessor in most of the projects out there is the Arduino, which can be programmed to generate a ramped pulse with modulated signal, which looks something like this. This is then fed into a regular buck converter, which is just a way of taking a signal and converting it into a DC output. And the DC output, if you have a ramped PWM signal is a ramped DC output. Now this signal, which looks like this, is smooth because a buck converter consists of an LC circuit, which is basically an inductor and a capacitor connected together in series, which acts as a smoothing circuit. So you get a smooth voltage rise. Now, a regular double resonant Tesla coil, and I won't go into how these work because there's plenty of information out there uses a signal which is usually just a straight square wave of very short duration something like that very short duration square wave instead of a long ramp signal which is 10 milliseconds this is about 100 microseconds so there's a very big difference in the way that the power is fed into the full bridge well, the ramp is fed over a relatively long time and with a regular double resonant Tesla core is fed over a very short time. So with this, you get a burst of energy and at full potential. And with this particular core, the QCW, you get a very slow, gentle rise in the voltage into the full bridge. Now the full bridge is simply a switch. It turns on and off and allows the DC to flow into a resonant circuit. And at resonance, you will get a ramped current uh, rise in your primary circuit, which is this LC circuit here. Then this is then, this is then coupled with your Tesla coil, which is an air core transformer. And if your secondary is at the same resonant frequency as your primary, it becomes double resonant and you should get massive buildup of current in your secondary, which will break out in the form of an arc. And that's just the basics. Now, typically these QCW coils um, have a, a lot of primary turns and a low capacitance, whereas a double resonant regular Tesla coil has a relatively higher resonant capacitance here and fewer turns. You want more coupling between your primary and your secondary with a QCW coil, whereas with a double resonant, you want less coupling. This is the basic build. And what this one does is it takes the signal from the Arduino and doesn't feed it directly to the buck, but instead feeds it through what's called a buck modulator. And that signal then goes to the buck and the signal, the ramp signal, is fed back into the buck modulator and it's modulated so that you have more control over the ramp. And I found that there was a lot of noise in the circuit when I used the buck modulator, and I can show you that in a minute. So 
I decided to do away with this. I still have these, I have two of these, but um, for now, we're just gonna use it set up like this uh, to your full bridge, to your resonant circuit of your Tesla coil. So the, these UD boards, all they do is they basically use current feedback from your primary tank circuit um, to drive the full bridge. And that drives a resonant circuit off the uh, double resonant Tesla coil. Next thing to do is to go to Lone Ocean's website, just look it up on Google. And this is the best description out there on the theory and how to build a QCW Tesla coil. He goes into several things that affect the performance of a QCW, which are beyond what I can present in this video. So you've got a big capacitor. This is just rectified mains that goes into this big capacitor, which is 15,000 microfarads, 450 volts rating. This stores, this is like an energy store. And this, the energy from this big capacitor is discharged through this buck converter. So this circuit here, which consists of an inductor and a capacitor in series is your basic buck circuit. And the energy is modulated with an Arduino, which sits in this box here. This, is got, this has its own power supply so that it won't be interfered by any, any noise that comes out of the circuit. So this sits in this box and switches this switch on with a PWM signal, which I showed you just a minute ago, to control the buck, which produces the ramp to DC. So here's a schematic of the buck, just here. So here's your inductor. This is your transistor, which is shown by the switch uh, symbol. Here's your power, here's your capacitor, and here's your ramped output. And you need a fast diode to allow this to charge up and not discharge. The RAM DC is then fed into the full bridge inverter here, which is the heart of the Tesla coil. It can be, you can also use a half bridge. I happen to be using a full bridge. So this, uh, this coil here, and this capacitance, this forms an LC circuit of the primary tank of the Tesla core, which um, I just showed you a second ago, which is basically this here. And then we have a small feedback transformer, which feeds back the current flowing through the uh, Tesla core primary to this UD board, which sits in this metal box. And this UD board turns the full bridge on and off at the resonant frequency of the tank circuit. And our secondary is simply a coil of wire wound on PVC, which has a top load. So this top load is a capacitor. So this is a second LC circuit, this top load capacitor and this wire form an LC circuit. When this circuit is at the resonance of this circuit, you have excellent transfer of energy from one circuit to the other through the air. So basically the magnetic field produced by this primary coil intersects the secondary coil and transfers energy into the secondary coil at the same resonant frequency, which allows energy buildup over here. Okay, let's switch everything on. First our scope. We'll put on our electronics. I'm gonna turn on a variac. This is an isolation transformer. So about 150 volts. Now we're gonna turn on our Arduino. Okay, here goes. Notice the sword arcs formed from the ramped input. Notice that at higher voltages, these sparks branch out, but at lower voltages, they were nice looking sword arcs. And this is 
probably due to the frequency being less than 300 kilohertz. So here's the yellow trace showing the ramp and the blue trace is the current in the primary circuit. Notice how clean the ramp is, very smooth, straight ramp. Now here's the same ramp using the uh, buck modulator and you can see a lot more noise in it. And um, this noise is variable and it may be from RF interference, but definitely could not get quite the same output. To get the spontaneous oscillations going and the feedback started so the Tesla coil runs, you need a little step off shown here, also known as a wick. This is about 30 volts typically. I noticed a significant improvement in performance when I increased the size of the top load. And uh, unfortunately, the UD driver, which was damaged to begin with, failed right before I was able to video the output. So I don't have that for you. I do hope you found this video useful, especially if you're thinking of building a QCW Tesla core. Please hit the bell and I'll keep you updated.